Hey, this is Rick Terry, your Maine real estate guide. I'm on location today in the town of Hersey, Maine on a 20 plus or minus acre parcel of, of land along Route 11, which is also known as the Katahdin Woods and Waters Scenic Byway. This is a great recreational timberland holding. If you're looking for a place to build a cabin in the woods, park an RV in the summertime, just come visit and uh, hunt moose, grouse, white-tailed deer or black bear. This is a fantastic property. It was, it was logged a couple of years ago, but they did a fabulous job. This is one of the best uh, best wood lots I've seen that had been recently harvested and we'll take a walk and so I can show you show you all the highlights but this is a fantastic property 20 plus or minus acres in the town of Hersey out here along the Katahdin Woods and Waters uh, scenic byway You've got power at the street I'm standing at the end of about a roughly a thousand uh, foot driveway that comes it's entirely on the property. Comes up here to this beautiful little clearing area where you could park an RV, pull right in here easy and uh, park an RV. But let's uh, let's take a look around at this uh, this 20 plus or minus acre lot coming to market at forty nine thousand nine hundred dollars. So one of the good things about this particular property is it does have very good soils. According to the USDA soil map, it's got gravelly loams, and you can see that quite clearly here where they pulled some material out when they <coughs> uh, built the road in here. These are gravelly loams, so it's well drained. Not a lot of not a lot of wetland on this on this particular property. And let's just do kind of a 360 here, and you can kind of look at the the height of the trees that are that are left here. When they logged it, they, they left a lot of wood. You could come in here and cut it again right now if you wanted to. Uh, there's a lot of lot of hardwood logs. They're a little young, but geez, they're, they look beautiful. A lot of, lot of maple. There's some pine, there's some spruce, there's some hemlock, there's a lot of ash. And let's just kind of take a walk through the woods and check this property out. So when they logged this, they, they didn't come in here with a processor or a large machine. They, it was a hand crew that logged it with a skidder. And so it's nice and clean. There's no brush, no piles of snags to twist an ankle. You can walk down the skidder trail quite easily. This is a great property for just enjoying wildlife. But look at all these, these hardwood stems. We got yellow birch, we got sugar maple, they got ash. A lot of young beech coming up, which is a mass crop for white tail, black bear, and other northern woods forest creatures. The lot's a nice rectangular shape. It's got about 685 feet of frontage on Route 11. And it goes back from the road, oh, 1,700, 1,800 feet or so. Here's a nice maple tree and you know, it's about 10 inches, 10 inches in diameter at breast height. Nice, nice looking, nice looking tree. And there's a lot of them. Here's a pretty good size ash right here. It's way up, it's a nice tree. This is a beautiful, beautiful lot. So if you're looking for a wood lot to hang on to for you and your family, just a place to recreate, a place to build a cabin in a lightly populated area. This is a great, great one. It's a big hemlock. Look at the size of this yellow birch right here.
as we're this birch tree is roughly 20 inches at breast height. Really, really nice tree. And there's a lot of wood on, on this lot still. So if you're looking for a piece of property that hasn't been butchered, you wanna look quick at this one because it's not gonna be around long. Now there is no real water feature per se on, on the property. We are adjacent to Hall Brook, which is a nice little trout stream, and that's just off the property, like 20 feet away. So you could walk down there and dangle an angle where I'm right in the pool right beside Route 11. You could probably catch a six or eight inch brook trout right there. You could also, uh, there's a gravel road right across the street. You go up there about a mile and you can come to Hall Pond. Hall Pond's a 38 acre. Uh, brook trout fishery it's 39 feet deep at its deepest point and it's stocked annually with brook trout and it does support a native population of re reproducing fish as well and you so you can be in you could drag a canoe up there and be in the water in about five minutes from the property now this lot offers just about everything that a recreational land buyer is looking for privacy good access power availability wildlife and recreational opportunities so this part of uh, southern aroostook county the town of hersey again is very sparsely populated hersey has a year-round population of roughly 73 people <laughs> No real services here, but nine and a half miles away from where my truck is parked right here, you'll be at Ellis's Grocery, right in the center of Patton. Patton is, has a population just under 900. There's a post office, health clinic, grocery store, hardware store, all available in Patton. Roughly 40 minutes away is the community of Holton. Holton is, has a population of about 6,200 people. In Holton, you'll find a hospital, Walmart. So the private driveway that extends right from Route 11, roughly 1,000 feet back to where my truck is parked on the property, is exceptionally well built. Just happens that my uncle Lee Terrio from Fort Kent who's been building roads for Irving Corporation for probably 35, 40 years, uh, built this road and it's very well done. You got proper ditches here for water management. And that's kind of the key of building a road that's gonna be here for a long time. This is a very nice private road. And again, let's take a look at the skyline. You can see all those tall hardwood stems everywhere. I mean, this, this lot is exceptionally well wooded. It looks great. Now from this portion of the property, if you look across the, across the street, that hill, hillside, that's Bear Mountain. Bear Mountain is part of the Appalachian chain of, it extends from Georgia all the way up to the Canadian Maritimes. So uh, uh, the uh, traditional Appalachian Trail ends in, at Mount Katahdin uh, outside of Millinocket. The International Appalachian Trail, which is an extension of the Appalachian Trail that terminates in the Canadian Maritimes, goes from Millinocket up through this area, Mount Chase, and uh, through Mars Hill, all the way up into the Canadian Maritimes. So Bear Mountain would be part of that International Appalachian Trail. And that's directly across the street. And here's direct public road access, Katahdin Woods and Waters Scenic Byway also known as Route 11. So as I mentioned, Hall Brook is right off the property and right here is one of the corners along Route 11. That yellow post is one of the survey markers. And right over here, roughly 
I don't know, 40 feet is Hall Brook. There's a pretty little pool right here along, uh, along Route 11. And if you follow Hall Brook, either up or down, uh, you're gonna find pools like this, the little riffles, and, uh, and, and little brook trout, you know, six to eight inches long. Maybe uh, you might catch a lunker that's 10 inches long, but, but uh, I used to, as a kid, I used to spend a lot of time on brooks just like this with a pair of sneakers, some angleworms, and a fishing rod, and fishing for brook trout. And you can find them right here, right off the property. So this is one of the sidelines, and it is marked with blue paint. The owner to the right currently is Haynes Corporation, which is one of the largest private landowners in the state of Maine. They're in the timber and land business. They're a pretty good neighbor to have. Follow this property line a little bit here, see where it goes. Now this lot is a very attractive lot. It's relatively flat at the top, and it's got some elevation and change from the road upwards. So you can get some views of Bear Mountain if you wish. If you're gonna build a, build a cabin here in this general area, if you cleared, cleared some trees, Bear Mountain's right in that direction. This is a great time of year to go for a walk. And this is a great property to walk on. You're not fighting your way through a bunch of small bushes and ras raspberry briars, etc. Very. They did an exceptional job when they cut this. As you can see, this sideline is entirely marked. We've got Haynes Corporation on my right and the lot I'm selling on my left. Blue paint and everywhere. So in this location here, right along the blue line, the owner of the property has established a, a bear hunting location where uh, they've been very successful over the last five seasons they've taken a bear each each and every year over the last five years so if you're looking for a place where you can hunt black bear and maine is a great destination to do that this is a great property where you can have your own bait site and a productive one at that this is a, a great location the bears typically come from this direction up the hill to right here where the where the bait's been established but it also brings up an opportune time right as we're right here in this area to talk about wood harvesting and the life cycle of trees in, in the woods, in the forest. So <clears throat> trees are a crop. They grow, they reach a certain age, and then they die. And uh, wood harvesting, proper land management of a, a wood lot, this one here has been exceptionally well managed. Um, it helps to maximize the return and keep a healthy forest. So right here is evidence of a tree that has reached the end of its life. This is a spruce tree, and that's the stump. And at the base, this tree was, boy, at the base, this tree was probably 12, 30 inches in diameter. And here's the rest of the trunk laying on the ground because what happened was the tree reached the end of its life. It got really, really tall, way above the forest canopy. A windstorm came by and toppled it over. And unless someone comes in and, and pulls this out and uh, before, uh, you got it roughly, uh, this, this happened this winter, so a person could salvage this log if they wanted to, they come in and haul this off. I had three of them fall down on my property this past winter and I uh, cut them up into 10 foot sections and brought them to a friend of mine that has a, a portable sawmill to saw them up into two by sixes. 
but uh, that's what two by sixes and two by fours are made from spruce and uh, if unless this log is salvaged it's just going to become mushroom food as it decays and becomes part of the forest floor so if you're to keep a healthy forest you want to harvest your trees at the right time and make use of them otherwise they're just going to topple over and become mushroom food so if you're looking for an exceptional woodlot parcel in the North Main Woods area, you want to take a close look at this property in the town of Hersey right off of Route 11, 20 plus or minus acres that has recently been harvested, but it's one of the best looking wood cutting operations I've ever seen. Uh, this You could come in here and pull out merchantable wood right now. Uh, there's still plenty of wood left here. <laughs> it's a beautiful lot. Great place to park a camper. Great place to build a home, either on or off grid. Great, great place just to come and visit and go for a walk in the woods. So you want to give Rick Terrio, your main real estate guy, to call at area code 207-731-9902. Let's come check this out together. It's one of the great things about Maine, and there are many, is we are blessed with lots of water, lots of ponds, lots of lakes, lots of brooks, and streams, and lots of rivers. And the waters of Maine are owned by the people of Maine. So even if you don't have frontage, per se, of a brook, stream, river, or pond on your property, if there's water available nearby, you do have access. And the Great Ponds Act um, is one of the benefits for people of Maine. So any great pond, which is larger than 10 acres in size, is accessible, at least by foot, uh, to the people of Maine to go fish and enjoy, and explore, and battle, whatever. So here we are walking up on Hall Pond, which is just about a mile and a half ride from the property to the pond. And as you can see with a little stash of boats here on the shore, other people come up here and enjoy it as well. And they just keep, a, keep their boat here so they don't have to haul them back and forth. But for me, I just drag my canoe in here and go for a paddle and take it away with me when I'm done. But this is a beautiful spot, a beautiful pond, 38 acres in size, maximum depth of 39 feet, stocked annually with brook trout to help keep a good population here so people have a, a, a nice productive fishery. And right at this moment, we're the only people here. <laughs>